Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God, not being moved by what we see or by what we feel, but only by what we believe. Praise God. Welcome to our church service, One Hour Church. That's right. Praise God. We get it all done in one hour. So I want to welcome all of you to our One Hour Church today. Praise God. No matter where you are, you know, uh, around the world, praise God. We welcome you this morning to a great time of the Word of God. And i got a very special uh, service for you today, a very special word for you today. It's called Establishing God's Covenant. Establishing God's Covenant. Do you know that you got a covenant with God? <laughs> Amen. Do you know that one of the things that changed my life back years ago when I was in ministry school, um, you know, we were in a, in, 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 in a class. I went to Apostle Fred's Christy Practice School there in Los Angeles, California. <clears throat> and we were in, a, we were in a, a session and with the president, who was Dr. Price. And, uh, you know, one of the students asked me, so Dr. Price, you know, many of us are struggling in our lives with our, you know, our tuition and different things we're struggling with. He said, do you all have any type of program that here at Crenshaw, you know, that could help people, you know, like us that, you know, maybe can't pay our tuition that are struggling, whatever they're and it never, it never, I never forgot the way he responded to them. <clears throat> he asked him this question. He said, did God tell you to come to school? Of course, you know, most of us, you know, being young preachers and things like that, fireballs, we said, oh, you know, I didn't say what he said. Oh, yes, I know God called me to come. He said, you mean to tell me that God called you to come to this ministry school and he is not paying your tuition? We, it, it's kind of like that thing, like it was a statement that kind of like took a citizen a shock, meaning, Either he's been real hard on us unnecessarily, he don't have no, you know, no, no sense of mercy, always trying to teach us a, a lesson. Well, I learned later on that he was teaching us a lesson. You know, we had two, we had, we had a lot of classes when I was in ministry school, but there were two special classes that we had there. <clears throat> One was called Faith, which I had the precious opportunity to sit right in front of Apostle Price and, and have him teach us on faith. Powerful lesson, powerful lesson. But then one of the things that another class they had that really added to that, which really gave me a firmness in my faith, is one of the, one of the instructors by the name of Pastor Alan Landry taught a class on the blood covenant. And oh my God, that thing gave me the reason for faith, the reason why I could believe God, the reason why I could stand. And as, as an apostle Price has said, you mean, you mean to tell me if God told you to come to school, He's not paying your tuition. What he's saying is when you're in covenant with God, <laughs> amen, God has obligated himself through covenant to perform his word. Not, not, in, not, not in an arrogant, we don't have to do it in an arrogant way, but God has made a covenant with you and I. And, and he talks about establishing, he, he does things in our life just to establish and make good his covenant in our lives. <clears throat> so I want you to go with me for a moment. <clears throat> Again, the, the title of this is going to be called Establishing God's covenant in your life because God wants his covenant established to be established in your life in my life and in all of our lives today And so I uh, just want to just welcome all of you that are coming on praise God So let's let's go to the book of Deuteronomy for a moment chapter number 8 and verse 18 And you know sometimes you know especially after COVID and job layoffs and people struggling with finances praise God I think it hit all of us in one way or another <clears throat> Are you following me? And, but the thing is that God, I've been studying this here lately, that God wants to remind us of something. <clears throat> and that is that we are in a covenant with him. And that if you're in a covenant with God, even though you may be having some challenges, physical challenges, spiritual challenges, financial challenges, because of our covenant with him, even though sometimes it's challenging to, to stand when things are coming against you from all sides, he's saying, Remember, you're in covenant with me, and I will perform my word concerning you. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse number 18 for a moment. <clears throat> it says this, But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear to our fathers, as it is this day. So most of God says, <clears throat> I'm gonna say, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember. That means to call to your mind your, your experience with me uh, and, 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 and the promises I made to you in my word. I want you to remember <clears throat> in this area that it is me, I, the Lord your God, 
that giveth thee what? The power to get wealth. Now that's powerful, isn't it? <clears throat> now, uh, again, I like when he used the word the Lord your God. You know, and, and, and because I like I like word studies, I, I looked up the word Lord and God. And you know, uh, if, you, if you look at if you do if you do original research on those two words, uh, one in Genesis chapter number one, verse one through thirty, I think it is, and Old chapter one, the word Lord is not mentioned. But in chapter two, the word Lord is mentioned. So chapter one. We have God, God who is by, and his name is called Elohim. Are you a me? Uh, in those areas, you know, El, the Elohim God. But in chapter two, he's called Jehovah. Same God, same God. But he's, he's operating in different ways. So chapter one is, is, is creating man. Chapter two, he's forming man. Chapter one, he's talking about all the trees and it's going to bear fruit like that. In chapter 2, the rain comes up and causes everything to grow. So I see chapter 2, Jehovah's at work. The Lord is at work. The Lord Jehovah is at work, forming everything, bringing everything into physical manifestation that he said in chapter number 1. So here in Deuteronomy, what it says here, when it says, uh, but thou shalt remember, listen now, the Lord Jehovah, your God, your creator, Elohim. Are uh, you following me? Uh, that it is he, the Lord your God, are uh, you following me? That giveth thee what? Power to get what? Wealth. And then it says here that he might establish his covenant. That he might establish his covenant. Now, the word covenant there in the, in, in the Hebrew is the word berith, which means it is a binding agreement between God and his people. It is a binding agreement between God and his people. Uh, it, it, it outlines uh, God's obligations, our obligations, God's responsibilities, our responsibilities, because both parties are involved in that. And God is saying here, I'm in covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your fathers. And so, because I, I, I promised them to bless them, to make them wealthy, to make them rich, then it's important for me as your seed. Because the Bible said that the promise was made to Abraham and to his seed. It was made to Abraham and to his seed. Are you following me? So God says, I want you now, and whatever you're facing financially, whatever you're facing spiritually, physically, or financially, I want you, to be, I want you right now to remember it is the Lord, Jehovah, your God, Elohim, Jehovah, chapter 2, that formed everything into physical manifestation. Your God, Elohim, chapter 1 of Genesis, who created everything. He is the one, the glory to God, that's giving you the power to get well. And so, yes, you see this today. Notice that God, let's go to the book of Genesis now, chapter number 17 and verse 1, and let's look and see what it says here as when God talks about to establish his covenant. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, it says, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, Listen now, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me and be thou perfect or mature. He says, verse 2, he says, and I will make my, this is now, covenant with you. I will make my covenant with you uh, 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 between me and thee. And he says, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. See, that's why God says, I got I to gotta make you wealthy. Because I, because I got to establish my covenant I made with Abraham. Because I've said to Abraham, I'm going to make you, I'm, I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. And then he says, in verse, let's go down to verse number six there. He says that I will make the exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. So when God is referring to the covenant with Abraham, 
This is what it's referring to. And why he said, I'm giving you power to get wealth to establish my what? My covenant. Amen. Praise God. I see you there, Pam. Praise God. God bless you, Pam. God bless you, Pastor Rita. God bless you, Joe. I see you all coming on. Praise God. And all the rest of you that are coming on, God bless you as you're walking, walking in this thing. So we're talking about the day God is establishing this covenant. And not only about you, but I'm pulling on this covenant myself for the things that God is speaking to me about for my future, for the ministry, for the future for my family, for the future of me personally. I'm pulling on covenant. I want you to pull on covenant. I want you to recognize that God today is saying, don't worry about anything. Even though it's tough, even though the, all the, the negative things are, are coming against your mind, he says, I'm the one, the Lord, Jehovah, your God, Elohim, is giving you, that the word give actually means to transfer upon, to transfer upon, I'm, I'm transferring upon you, are you following the power, glory to God, to get well, are you following it today? So notice what he says here in Exodus now. God bless you, Montoya. I see you. Robin, I see y'all coming on. Praise God. So look at the book of Exodus here, chapter number 19 for a moment and verse number 5. Look what it says here. It says, now, therefore, if you will obey my voice. Listen, I'm going to obey my voice and, and do what? Keep my covenant. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure above all people. Uh, 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 huge to me on top of all people because all the earth is mine. <laughs> so I think that he says all the earth is mine. He says, I want you to just obey my voice. So as you, as, you, as you think about covenant, think about what God is speaking to your heart, whether concerning your purpose that he has for your life, whether it's concerning your, your ministry, whether it's concerning your business, whatever, what, concerning your family. The most important thing he says, I want you to listen to my voice because we're in covenant together. And I'm covenanted with you that, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you won't have to fear no evil because I'm with you. So I'm going to guide you through whatever you're going through right now, spiritually, whatever you're going through financially, whatever you're going through uh, physically or whatever there, that I'm in covenant with you. And I'm here today to establish my covenant with you. Are you following that today? So let's notice here again in Exodus. And I'm, I'm just pulling it because God says in the book of uh, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18, he said this, I'm going to make you wealthy to establish my what? My covenant. The word establish me, I'm going to make it good. I'm going to fulfill my covenant in your life. In Jesus' name. So notice what he said in, in Exodus chapter number 34, verse 10. Look what he says there. He says, and behold, I make a what? A covenant before all thy people. Oh, I like this part. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth. Oh, my God. When you're in God, I'm going to see, he said, get ready, because I'm getting ready to do some marvels in your life that have not been done in all the earth. He said, I'm going to do it because of my covenant in your life. He says, nor any nation and all the people among you, which, are, which, which thou art, this now, shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. But God is saying that people are going to be beginning to start seeing because you are a covenant person. And God has established a covenant in your life. They're going to see marvels done in your life. Marvelous things done in your life. Glory to God. Why? Because he's establishing his covenant with you in Jesus' name. So then notice, notice the book of Deuteronomy for a moment. Deuteronomy chapter number 7 and verse number 9. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Let's see what it says there. He says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. He is Elohim. The Lord Jehovah is God Elohim. You got that? The faithful God, the faithful Elohim, which what? Keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him <clears throat> and keep his commandments <clears throat> excuse me, to a thousand generations. Isn't that blessed? So God has said that that, that that covenant is still in force. The covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that made them rich and wealthy, he said it's still in force. He says, I need you to keep my covenant. I need you to keep my covenant with you. Amen. So notice here, uh, um, and, and as you're going on in verse number 12, let's, let's skip down to verse number 12 there. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, what it says. He says, Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments and keep them and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant which he swore to thy fathers. Skip down to verse 13 now. And he will love thee 
and bless thee and multiply thee, he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, the increase of thy kin. Let's go down to verse number 14 now. Thou shalt be, verse 14, thou shalt be blessed above all people. And, and there shall not be male or female um, a bearing among you. In verse 15, he said, look what verse 15 says. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. All that is a promise that God says, I've got to, I've got to remove sickness from your life. I've got to bless you because I'm in covenant with you through Abraham. The Bible said, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to that promise. The Bible said the promise was not made to Abraham's seeds, plural, but to Abraham's seed. That's in the book of Galatians chapter 3, which is Christ. So Christ is that seed of Abraham. God said, and if you be Christ, then you Abraham's seed. And all the promises God made to the seed of Abraham, you and I are heirs to that. So we have a right then to be wealthy. We have a right to be blessed. We have a right there then to be multiplied in our lives. Why? Because we are in covenant with God, and God is promising us right now that I'm going to establish, I'm going to make good my covenant in your life in Jesus' name. So let's let's go on down a little farther. And because Deuteronomy, once again, chapter number eight and verse number six, because we, we're talking about this covenant God made, that, that He's making good in your life right now. He's making it good in your family, making, He's making good in your family. You're making it good in your business, making it good in your church, making it good in the health of your body. Peace out, take sickness out away, away from you because all that is a part of the covenant. Uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 6 says this. He said, therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways. Are you following me? For the Lord thy God, this is prophecy to you right now. For the Lord your God, Deuteronomy 8 verse 7. For the Lord your God, Jehovah your Elohim bringing thee into a good land. Are you ready for that? A land of brooks of water, of fountains and of depths that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and figs and uh, uh, fig, uh, fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. In other words, to, for them, that was the best of the best of the best of the best. That was seven star living for them. <laughs> Are you following me? And then he says in verse number nine, he says, for a land we're in, Thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Glory to God. And thou shalt not lack anything in it. So we got to write the command lack to leave in Jesus' name because we are in covenant with Almighty God. And he says here, A land whose stones are iron, out of whose hill thou mayest dig brass, which is best well. In verse 10, he said, But he says this, remember this though, when you are eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God. See, and this is what people miss it at. When they get full, they get the houses, they forget to bless God. When, when you're eating it full, then you, thou shalt bless the Lord thy God which, which, uh, for the good land which he gives you, the house which he gives you, the car that he gives you, the job that he gives you, the business, the church that he gives you. And then he says here, verse 11, Oh my God. And this is what a lot of people are missing it right here. Verse 11. Beware lest thou forget not the Lord your God in not keeping his commandments. Stop going to church. Stop tithing. Stop worshiping God. Stop praying because now you got everything. He said, uh, uh, and, and keeping his judgments and his step which I commanded this day. Verse number 12. Lest when you have eaten, and are full, and you built your goodly house. You got the house you wanted. And you dwell in them house. You got the car, the cash, and the clothes. He says, verse 13, and because this covenant, look what he says here, because of the covenant, verse 13, and when your herds and your flocks multiply because of my covenant, your silver and your gold is multiplied by my covenant because of my covenant, and all that you have is multiplied, verse 14, then your heart be lifted up. Oh, my God. And you forget the Lord your God, which brought thee forth out of the land of from Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through that terrible and great wilderness, where the fiery serpents and scorpions and drop, where the, no water was, who brought thee forth out of the rock of flint. I caused water to come out of the rock for you. 
I fed, in verse 16, I fed you in the wilderness with a manna, which your fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and they might prove thee to do the good to let her in. And look what he said. This is what happened to a lot of Christians today, saints. You know, they, uh, they said less than, most, most churches don't have like 10% of people that tithe. Are you following me? Uh, and, 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 and this is an indictment. Because people, they, 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 they almost feel like they use God to get to where they're at. But look what he says in verse number 17. He says, and you begin to say in your heart, my power and my, the might of my hand has gotten me this well. I worked hard for this. I got my degree, and that's why I'm being blessed. Are you following me? You don't know Zerah. So therefore, uh, in verse 18, he said, but you shall remember. And this is what God has said to the body of Christ today, because it's a shame that most churches right now and ministries are being supported by 10% of the people. Are you following me? They, 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 they're using God's covenant to get things, but they're forgetting the Lord thy God. And he says here, verse, 16, verse 18, he said, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God, which giveth thee the power, who gave you the power to get the wealth, to get the car, the cast and the clothes. He says that he may establish his covenant. So the whole purpose of him doing it was not just you can get the cats and the clothes, but he wants to establish his covenant in your life. He, he, he takes delight in your prosperity. He takes delight in that beautiful house you're living in, beautiful car you have, that business in that church. He said, but I take delight in your prosperity. I want you to prosper. I want to give you the desires of your heart. But many people are forgetting God. 85% uh, of the church members are forgetting God. And that's why a lot of times God has to blow on that thing to let you get you back to understanding he wants to be your source and your only source because it is the Lord your God. It is Jehovah, your Elohim, your creator, the one that formed and brought those things in the mouth. This is for your life. They gave you the power to get the wealth. And my, my, my call to you, uh, if, if you're here today and you said, Dr. Craig, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, I, you know, I've got to admit, I, I forgot. <laughs> what do you mean by forgot? How, how, how did you forget? I used to go to church, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a tithe anymore. I don't give like I should be. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not serving the church like I should be serving. I know there's a call of God in my life, but I'm not functioning that call anymore. Because, you know, now I, I, I'm doing all these other things now. I don't have time to serve. I don't have time. And I, I'm, I'm overpowered with bills, and I don't have time to give my tithe anymore. So God says, beware lest thou forget the Lord thy God. They give thee the power to get the wealth. And see, and so God is saying that he's getting ready to take, bring the church into a place of wealth that, that, that's going to call people to marvel. But it means that i got to get people that I can establish that wealth through that won't get lifted up in their pride. I hear from those areas. So, so God wants to do it. I said, God wants to do it. I said, and God wants to do it. And <laughs> go to God. Amen. So let's look, at this, let's look at this for a moment. Because God blessed the people. You know, notice what it says, this is the, this, go to me to the book of Genesis for a moment, chapter number 24, verse 35. I'm going to show you that God made, Abraham was faithful to covenant, and God fulfilled his promise in Abraham's life. Uh, Genesis chapter 24, verse 35 says, and the Lord blessed my, this is Abraham's, one of Abraham's employees. He said, the Lord has blessed my master abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep. He's giving them cattle and silver and gold and male and female servants, camels and donkeys. So God, he, the, the servant said, he blessed my master greatly and he's given him, made him wealthy. Uh, Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, we can see that anybody that serves God, God I'm, God's going to make you wealthy. Uh, and we can see, this is in the NIV Bible, okay? It says, uh, it says Abraham became very wealthy <laughs> in livestock and in silver and in gold. God, because God promised him as a part of the covenant, I'm going to make you wealthy. And then notice here in the book of First Chronicles, and we can see David who started off just as a sheep herder. And we can see how God made David wealthy. And <laughs> glory to God, he started just a sheep boy. In, in, in First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11, what it says, David says this. This is, the, this, this is also in the NIV Bible. He says, the, yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you, Lord, are exalted as head above all. We got to come to that point. Verse 12 says, 
wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength unto all. So God is saying, I don't want not one person in my, in my body to not be wealthy. But I need them not to forget the Lord, their God, who gave them the power to get it. That's why that's why we give first fruits and we give offerings. That's why we worship God with our tithing. Because that's us saying, Lord, you bless me. I'm not forgot that it is you that gave me the power to get this wealth in Jesus' name. You know, in the book of Ecclesiastes now, chapter number 5, verse 19. I'm just giving you some scriptures to base this on, saints, because you need to know that God is getting ready to make some people wealthy. He's going to make he's going to bless you beyond your socks, spiritually, physically, and financially. But God is saying, let's, let's get our attitude right. Let's get our posture correct so that God can trust us at this level of not just paying our bills every day. Amen. Notice what he says in Ecclesiastes now, chapter number 5, verse 19 of Ecclesiastes, he says, Every man to whom God has given riches and wealth. You get that? To whom God has given riches and wealth and has given him the power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. I mean, God said, I'm, I've got a gift for you to make you wealthy, to give you wealth and riches as my gift. Oh, thank God. I speak that over your life right now. I speak that over your family. I speak that over your ministry, over your business in Jesus' name, that God is granting you, praise God, wealth today in Jesus' name, rising above all the things. Notice here in the book of Psalms, chapter number uh, 66 now, Psalm 66, verse number 12, what it says, and we can see how God for the children of Israel out of their poverty situation that they had been in for over 400 years and in one day made them wealthy. Psalm 66 verse 12 says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water, but thou, O Lord, brought us out into a wealthy place. I'm speaking of your life right now. No matter where you are right now, God is bringing you out. God is bringing me out. God is bringing your business out, your family out, into a wealthy place. Oh, <laughs> to God. Can you receive that today? Are, 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 you, are you a candidate for this level of living that, that God is bringing on the body of Christ right now? I believe you are. I believe that's why you listen to me right now. Because, because you're, you're the seed of Abraham. And God has said the devil has been stealing from you long enough. He's kept you at a low level long enough. He's raising you up now, and you, and you are now a wealthy place traveler. Glory to God. Amen. So look what it says here. You said, God, Pastor Kurt, how is God going to do this? How is God going to do this? Well, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 in, in the Amplified Bible says this. A good man leaves an inheritance of more stability and goodness to his children. Listen to this now. And the wealth of the sinner, the wealth of the sinner and it's, it's an Amplified Bible. The wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. I mean, God's got wealth right now laid up for you that right now is in the hands of sinners and the wicked. But as you become covenant-minded and we begin to follow God's instructions concerning covenant, he said, there's stored up blessings. There's stored up wealth I've got for you. Let me give it a transfer out of the hands of the wicked into your hands. I speak that of your life right now. There is a supernatural transfer happening right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, uh, in the spirit realm, who, who Elohim is, is created for you and who Jehovah is now forming in your life, called the manifest in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Does it happen? Yo, did I remember uh, uh, Laban in the Bible? Who has stole all of Jacob's money? You know, to cheat him on his wages. Prop, look up Genesis chapter thirty-one and verse number one. Look what it says here about God. How God transferred the wealth of the wicked into your hands. It said Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying that Jacob has taken everything of our father own and has gained all this wealth that belonged to our father. Uh, notice uh, in verse sixteen what, what he says here. Verse sixteen says, "Surely all the wealth." That God took away from our father, belong that belong that belong to us and our children, Amen. So God literally took the wealth from Laban and He transferred it into uh, into Jacob's hands. 
And God right now, all the wealth of the wicked, that's why God said, man, you got to be moved by the wicked. Because all the wealth of the wicked are accumulating right now. God is saying that they don't change. He's transferred into your hand. But you got to become a vehicle that God can transfer it to. Amen. And, and I decree you are. Because you wouldn't be listening to me because you would probably just cut me off when I first started talking about wealth in that area, about God's covenant. But because you're still listening, that means you are a candidate for this wealth in Jesus' name. So therefore, it's time to stop thinking wealth because that's what God is doing in your life. It's time to believe that you're worthy for wealth, that you're worthy. Don't be thinking about, that's just not me. No, you got to believe that you're worthy because you're a seed of Abraham. Amen? You, you got to start seeing yourself worthy of, of, of the promise of God giving you that God established his covenant in your life of wealth, then also you got to study what the others. You stop studying folks that don't want to go nowhere. Amen. The hand of the Bible said, be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Is that right? Uh, and so remember the purpose of it. He said the purpose of it is to establish his covenant. So even though you'll get your cash, your clothes, and your car, and the beautiful home, which you, you deserve, he said, but the purpose of the wealth is to establish my covenant. And if, you can, if, if I can speak to you and say, Give that thousand, give that five hundred, give that two hundred dollars, or give that tithe. Uh, he said that I, I can trust you with the wealth, but but if, but if I can't trust you with it, and, and you're operating with closed hands, then I then, then then I can only get to you what I can get through you. I'm gonna say again, God said I can only get to you what I can get through you. So you got to open your hands. Okay, God, whatever you speak to me, I'm going to obey you because you because you want to get your covenant established in my life, but also in the world to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out around the world in Jesus' name. Is that right? So as, you, so as you're moving in this area, the next thing you do is you, you, you learn how to sow a covenant seed. One of the reasons why Isaac stayed blessed is because he understood the power of the covenant seed. Are you a farm in those areas? So, no, so let's look in Genesis chapter number uh, uh, 26 for a moment and verse number 12 what it says. It says, then Isaac, this is during the land of famine, but Isaac was a, he was a seed, he was a, he was a seed of Abraham, and he was an heir to the covenant. So you understand, no matter what situation I'm in right now, I'm only one seed away from my, my wealth. I'm going to say again, Isaac understood, no matter what I'm going through, he was in the land of famine. He understood, I'm only one seed. I don't have wealth, but I got a seed. And so in Genesis chapter number 26, verse 12, it says, then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him and empowered him to prosper. In verse 13 it says, and the man waxed great, went forward and grew until he became very great. Now the NIV Bible says it like this, the man became rich, Joseph, I mean, I mean, I mean Isaac, in a time of famine, the man became rich, his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. And then the message Bible goes even farther than this. It says Isaac planted crops in that land and took in a huge harvest that year during famine. God blessed him. Listen to this now. And it says the man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. I speak it of your life. That you are a covenant keeper. Glory to God. And you are, you are empowered by God. As of today, I speak of your life right now. No matter what is happening, I'm receiving this myself. I've been studying this all this week. I've been studying this this, this week. That, Lord, all right, God, because I know what you got for my life. I know what God's got for your life. And we're in a time right now where, where the future in the physical realm is uncertain. In the physical realm. But we have a realm we can operate in called the supernatural realm that we can, we can tap into the power to get well, where God becomes our source and our only source. And so Isaac understood, he said, you know what, I'm in a, I'm in a place of poverty, but I know that there's a way I can get this wealth transfer into my life. I get this wealth check in my life through the power of my seed. So Bob said, Isaac sold in that land and received that same year a hundredfold. Things can turn around your life, saints. It, it does not come by getting all you can, handing all you get, then sitting on the can. 
it comes by understanding you're in covenant with God. And this covenant is not a physical, natural covenant. There's no physical writings that say this, but it's a covenant in your heart. God said, I write my laws in their heart in this new covenant. And God said, you'll follow me in my covenant. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you. You're going to bless coming in, bless going out. He said, but I, you, you got to flow in your covenant. So Isaac planted that seed. Are you a tither? Are you a tither? You said, Craig, I'm, I'm not really involved in the church. That's not what I asked you. Are you a tither? Because if you're a seed of Abraham, Abraham was the beginning of the tithe. The Bible said he gave tithe to, of all to Melchizedek. That had nothing to do with the law. I'm just really helping you in this area because I understand that many people are trying to operate in this covenant of wealth, but they're not tithers. So you have to be a tither. Someone, you have to, you have to be a tither. You have to, the Bible says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Well, that's great. I'm not at church. Well, that's why I'm, I'm bringing the church to you today. Because, because it's important for you to tithe. And tithe is that one tenth of your income. Oh, Dr. Craig, you're being a little legalistic. No, it's not. Abraham was not being legalistic when he tithed to Melchizedek. That's for the law, year before the law even happened. He was, Abraham tithed in faith and his worship to God, saying, God, you're the one blessing with this money. And so, God, this tithe is not something I'm, I have to do legalistically, but something I desire to do as my worship to you. So connecting to this covenant of wealth, you have to be a tither. Not legalistically, but in your heart and your worship. And you bring that tent to the Lord. You got that? And then number two, give an offering. God said that seed time and harvest will not cease. And this is what Isaac stood on. Isaac said, you know, I'm in poverty. I'm going through some things, but I got a seed. And Isaac planted that seed. The Bible said God blessed that seed. And 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 and, and, and get, it made a hundredfold that same year, and he became richer and richer by the day. That's what God is going to do to the body of Christ. But we got we got to get around this world's thinking, and, and and get into this level of faith and obedience to God, so that God can bless us at the level He desires to bless us in Jesus' name. So I, I want to encourage you today that God said it's time that He wants to establish His covenant in your life. <laughs> Glory to God. He wants to establish a covenant in your business. He wants to establish a covenant in your church, with your family. But you got to be a covenant keeper. You have to be a covenant keeper. And, 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 and one of the, the first levels, it's the, one of the lowest levels of getting your covenant relationship right with God in with your finances. What do you mean, Dr. Craig? The Bible says where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. So one of the first things that you find how you get your heart back right with God like he wants to is where you, where's your treasure? Is, you, is your treasure in your clothes, your car, your house? Where's your treasure? He said where your heart is. That's why God, the tithe is really located where your treasure is. He said, God, I'm giving my tithe because I'm trusting you my source and you my only source. And I'm trusting you that when I sow this tithe, I'm opening, that you're opening the windows of heaven and the blessings of God are put upon my life. I'm activating that blessing in my life. I'm not doing it so you can bless me. I'm doing it so the blessing can be manifested. Remember I said in Genesis chapter 1, the Elohim was creating everything, but chapter number 2, Jehovah was forming everything. So even though God has blessed you spiritually, you're blessed, but, but you, need that, you need Jehovah now, that anointing, to manifest those blessings in your life. And when, so when you're tired, God says then the windows of heaven that have, been, that have been shut down on your life will open up and your ground will be released in Jesus' name. Amen. So right there on Facebook, it's important for you to do this. You know, in, in this area, as a covenant keeping a child of God, you know, there's a link on there. You can click that link on Facebook or if you've been watching this on YouTube, have you watching this? You, or you can do the cash app right there, dollar sign apostle I am, or you can use the, um, the, uh, the, uh, on, on like a QR code now, but, but you can use the cash app there, or you can use the uh, uh, the uh, the Zelle. Zelle is also on there. It, but you but you need to not be governed by this world. Where God wants to take you to, it's not going to happen in this three-dimensional world. It's not going to happen on this in this secular thinking. It's going it's not going to happen on on what eighty five percent of the church is operating secularly. Even someone that pay their time, they're doing it legalistically. But God has said, I need your worship. 
I need, I need you to, I need to be first in your life. I need to be your source and your only source. And, and the first level of doing that is where's your money at? Where's your heart at? Are you, are you open to that time? Are you open to sowing that seed? Because God said, I need to get your heart right with me so I can get you this property, this prosperity I want you to have. So right there on Facebook, use why you're watching this, scroll down and you'll see the links out that you do that, whether it's Cash App, whether it's Zelle, and flow in this. And, and let's, let's go together. Let's, let's walk together in this covenant of God. Because God is raising us up. I don't care what we have. I mean, believe me, I've seen miracles in the past. I've seen God do marvelous things in the past. But see, God says, what I've seen in the past is nothing what I'm doing in the future. Because God said, but, but keep your heart right. Keep your heart right before me so I can be a covenant keeper in your life. And I'm speaking that over your life right now. That even though maybe you, you slacking up and things like that and not been faithful, but I decree all that's the past now. Glory to God. Today, there's a fresh new beginning for you that God Almighty is releasing on your life right now. It's called He's establishing his covenant in your life. He's a covenant keeper of God. He's, I'm giving you power, not just to make it day by day, but I'm giving you power, according to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, to get wealth now, to establish my covenant in your life. And that wealth is the ability for God. So I'm going to probably, probably teach you this because if the smart God's on this, I'm going to really teach you on this some of these things because God wants to bring, bring it to that place of wealth. So go ahead and sow that seed. Go ahead and give your tithe right now so I can pray for you. I'm going to believe God with you. This is church. This is church. So don't think we're not the creator. We're not the church. Yes, you are. The church has come to you today. You know, I'm, I'm anointed by God. I'm anointed by God. The church has come to you today. So, you know, right now, before you, you, you do anything, you know, give your tithe right now. There's cash out. There's zeal right now. So that tithe, because I'm going to pray for you. I'm, I'm believing God. This is your co- This is a day of covenant. This is a day of God that stems is coming to your life. Uh, and, and, you know, or you, you get that seed right now. You sow that seed right now. I'm, I'm believing God that seed is going to produce a hundredfold this year in your life. And, and, and you're going to see daily increase in your life because as we partner together in Jesus' name. All right, I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray. But, but you, I can't pray on what you should, you should do or what you could have done. I'm only praying for what you do as you obey God today. Are you ready for that? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks for every person that is listening. I thank you, God, that you are our source, our only source. You are the God, Lord Jehovah God, who gives us power to get wealth. And God, I declare that the, the bread of getting alone, struggling attitude is broken up the body of Christ. And I decree, Father, wealth, increase, and blessing and favor in their lives, their churches, their ministries, their businesses, and, and, their, and their families in the name of Jesus. So, God, I give you thanks for it, and I give you praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, this has been a great time to be with you. Uh, I'll probably come back on sometime this week, maybe tomorrow, next day, or, or Tuesday, something like that, because I'm, 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 I'm restudying this myself. You know, I've, I've known all this. I'm remeditating all this right now for what God's got for my life, and I want you to be a part of that with me in Jesus' name. So until then, this is an apostle Alpha Christ that made God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.